conversations in the last while. We didn't have these conversations before. But to hear how many of our friends and how many of the, the people around us couldn't stand the fact that their domestic worker works in this house of theirs. You know, it doesn't matter how big the house is, but works in a house and serves patiently and lovingly, but then go home to live with her three kids without a husband in a shack somewhere. And you just couldn't stand, stand that anymore. They just can't live with that divide anymore. Like you, you tell your, 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 your Christian domestic worker, whether she's Christian or not, doesn't really matter either. But you tell her about the love of God and how God has been so good to you. And they see how God has been so good to you when you go away for three weeks on a holiday or when you get a new car or when you're going to raise or when they can see new furniture in your house being bought the whole time. And it must have been difficult for a long time to see about the love of God. And you talk about the love of God, but their question is, you know, where is the love? Where is this love? Is God only good to some of his children? Is the grace of God, or do we serve a father who reigns on the righteous and the unrighteous, who makes a sunrise on the just and the unjust? Because that's the father that we know when we sin, but that's also the father that we represent to the world. The Lord said to us a few years ago, 2009, we are a bunch of professionals and young working people in our church, young families, and God said to us prophetically saying, speaking from Galatians, saying, consider the poor. And we look around you and are like, I don't really know poor people. I don't really know. It's one of the greatest accusations in the church in the West. It's not that we don't love the poor. We don't even know the poor. Do you only have rich friends, up and coming guys, like Jesus said? You have a feast for your friends that are rich and they can return the favor? Or do we have friends that can never repay what we do for them? And it's friends. It's not as though you're a charity case. It's a friend. You're my friend. Because maybe the, most, the greatest wealth in the world is not monetary, but maybe it's grace and love and devotion. Maybe that is the real wealth. So God said to us, consider the poor. So we started looking around, and we were small and wise enough to not try to do our own thing. So we started praying, and it was a time of serious fasting and prayer. And the elders just heard the Lord say, no, and this is the word that the Lord said to us. I want you to take a stand and plant a church to stand between the living and the dead. I want you to enter in and to start a community, to start a church. And that's where the urban church was birthed from. And um, I would like you to show, just show you one short video clip just to give you a feel. And you know friends like these. Sometimes in my circumstances before... I came to the church, I cried out to the Lord. I, I mean, totally cried out, really, really cried out. I'll never forget it. I was on my way to my brother's house here in Belvo, not far from here, and I walk on a Thursday pass here. And uh, the other was standing at the gate, and he's like, Don't you want to come join us? Baby? We're busy. Uh, doing Bible study and I'm like yeah stick to the point yeah uh, I got in here the moment I step inside this building I could feel the warmth and the love it's like it was touchable and yeah I grow spiritually I grow I grow and this calmness in me is peace in me real calmness I'm like, wow, whatever you are busy for, please continue with it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I keep coming, coming, coming. Whether it, it's raining or snowing on a Thursday or a Sunday, I walk. I walk. It's not for uh, a person I'm walking. I'm, I'm doing this. It's not for a person. It's for God. He has protected me. He still does. He loves me. Sometimes I, I, I just go crazy and give him praise. Just because. Just because. Just because he deserves it. Whatever God puts on my part, I overcome it. Because, guess what? Wayne can't do it. Wayne can't. But with you, I will. The before Wayne was a very 
negative uh, attacking first I used to call it it's my way or the highway yeah, that was me and now I always need this mercy and grace I need it I can't do without it I'm nothing without this mercy and grace you have to open your heart to God I open my heart to him my brother it was him it was me and I came and opened it's hard but it's possible it's hard and now yeah I am I will praise this God from here to I don't know when but I will praise him nothing else nothing else If you were to ask Wayne, where's the love? He would say, right there in that small building in that community. That's where he found love. I don't know if you heard what he said. That's where he found his father. That's where he found a community, a place of belonging. It's just people that love him. It's people that, that, that lavish on him. It's people that care for him. Wayne said, I will praise this God as long as I live. I don't know until when. And we know until when. Because on the 30th of June this year, 18 months, 17 months after Philip had this interview and recorded this interview with him, Wayne passed away. Wayne is more alive today than he ever was. Wayne is with Jesus, with his father, in a real community in heaven. And um, we miss him because he's a lacquer <laughs> Because he's so funny and so lively and, and so full of energy and thankfulness. He was an optimistic, thankful, joyful person. He really found a community that love. It's precious to me where Wayne passed away. Wayne passed away among friends in a safe space with mess we erected for the homeless people on a bed, in a place where he had a warm shower and a meal in a community that he was loved. Before the ambulance came, he passed away and he went to be with his father. And the word that made us start that thing, I'm going to share with you this morning, that community is the gap between the living and the dead. In Numbers chapter 16, on the next day... All of the congregation of the um, children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And I'm thinking, my image here is of a little Jack Russell. How many of you know Jack Russell dogs? Very similarity to your sausage dogs. <laughs> but they don't give up. If a Jack Russell, you know, attacks, a, a, they always attack Alsatians or big dogs. But they don't give up. They don't get the lesson that you are too small. So the next day, it's like that. Sin in the human heart just does not stop complaining against Moses and Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. Now it happened when the congregation had gathered against Moses. So there was like a Moses must fall, Aaron must fall, <laughs> promised land, hashtag thing happening there. That they turned towards the tabernacle of meeting and suddenly the cloud covered and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of meeting. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, get away from among this congregation that I may consume them once and for all in a moment. And they fell on their faces. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and said, no, God. So Moses said to Aaron, take the censer and put fire in it. That censer that yesterday you had in your hand when God indicated that you are the chosen priest of God. Take that in your hand. Take that in your hand and put fire in it from the altar and don't pray in the tabernacle, put incense in it and take it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them for wrath has gone out from the Lord, the plague has begun and all of a sudden the plague started and remember the tent of meeting was away from the camp, it's a holy place so they're looking over masses of people, millions of people and they could see in one sense in my head, in my face, in my eyes as though it started there on the right-hand side and the plague started and people were screaming and getting sick and dying like quickly. Because by the time old Aaron ran there, the Bible says 147,000 people had already perished. And Aaron ran straight in them. He ran in there between the living and the dead. And as he entered there and worshiped God there and interceded for the people there between the living and the dead, that's where the plague ended. The amazing thing is that Aaron wasn't really, it's not as though, so nothing would have happened unless Aaron ran in between the living and the dead. Nothing would have happened, nothing. 
unless he had ran in, the plague would have had its course and God would have started over with Moses and Aaron. But because he jumped in, everything changed. But it's not Aaron that changed everything. It's the presence of God. The presence of God changed everything. But he understood that the only reason that I exist here on this earth and not in heaven with the Father is to mediate. That's why I'm here, is to mediate. I am the chosen priest of God. We are a chosen priesthood. What do priests do? They enter in between the living and the dead. And because you are there with the presence of God, the plague ends. And this is all I want you to take home from this session. It's just to take your stand. What does it mean to love your community? It means simply take your stand. Position yourself in the face of the living and the dead. To take a stand. Aaron understood the cost. It's, it was really uncomfortable. It was hard work. And it was really, it would have, could have cost him his life. And this is where Paul writes so beautifully in Romans 12. Where he says, Based on the mercies of God, consider all the goodness of God, the mercies of God which is shown to you, the greatness of this gift of salvation. What is your reasonable act of service to present yourself as a living sacrifice, to stand between the living and the dead? That is the most reasonable sacrifice because we are his chosen people. We are his kingdom of priests. Mm -hmm.